Question for me, though. I think at a Pretty decent performance. He had to be a frontline tank, and that's what he built for to an extent. Jermaine impressed me. Jermaine looked very good. Until I did not think he was going to be as strong as he was. And if he can run that back, this might be a set win for Myrmidons. Uh, this time, it looks like, again, Sympics. playing out of the bottom. Yep, same. We're going to see, once again, Myrmidons are going to get first pick. Dignitas with the second pick option. And I don't think we'll see Myrmidons switch things up too much this game. I don't think they were threatened by much that Dignitas threw their way. So, Hades Alquang? Hades Alquang makes sense to me in my head. Or take Hades yourself. Oh. But then, to be fair, if, you, if you're if against somebody that is very well known for a god, do you really want to run it against him? Because he should know how to carry. He should know what defeats it well, correct? I mean, I guess. I mean, but I mean, when someone's a master, right? Like, he he truly is. Yeah, he is definitely master. the master. Uh, ban phase you know here. it's true when DM admits it, too. For like, mere I was I was surprised you didn't say it was you. Ares again. They're going to keep it going. So, Alquang or Hades, which one's it going to be? Well, the, the lesser of two evils. Which one is evil enough? Will they leave Alquang available to them? It's there it is. The Hades ban. So, so this will be Alquang first pick, Alquang, Dignitas, likely to answer back with Bologna Janus. I like this because I don't know how, well, how good Fish is. Alquang jungle actually is, so will Myrmidons even look to pick this one up? Will they look to run the Bologna again? Because it worked out well for Fisher last game, but that means they may leave Alquang available. They're going to pick it up. See, for Could me, solo. Get, get Fisher is not the type of player that's like creating his own meta and running his own gods. He strictly follows what the top players are doing. Mm -hmm. He tries to put his own little spin on the way that the play style goes, Which but is, what you should he be doing. follows the meta. What you should be doing as a new pro player or a player right. that's trying to get to that level right. is copy and adapt to your own playstyle. A hundred percent. It's when you get to that PhD level that you can start yeah. creating your own philosophy. Like the Mogao Hades. Playstyle. Right, the Mogao Hades, the Barracuda AMC from Worlds. Exactly. The Scylla Stealth. To be fair, Scylla should have just been played the yeah, whole time. Yeah, he should have been. That's nonsense. Well, Dignitas is going to run back that Athena that Frezzy played. Oh. I don't think Frezzy played a bad game on this that. Has gotta be this has got to be Bologna. It should be. They can't let Bologna and Alquan get on the same there team. There we go. Bologna, Athena, going to be tag teaming up. Will they run the Medusa with that? We'll find out. But it's now over to Myrmidons for what they're going to run. So for this, Myrmidons doesn't really have to pick Janus here if they don't want it, uh, considering the fact that Shadow Nightmare's god pool is basically infinite. I think they should pick Janus here because I... Th they're the two gods. There's two gods that we can see very strong on Sayo is Isis, which I was going to say, and Giannis. Right. And I think against the Bologna and Athena combo, you'd probably want to be on that Giannis for mobility and escape. Right, but we should also consider that Sayo is going to be the most comfortable on Isis, That's true. which means his decision making will be the fastest. That's true. I guess as well, Ice is a better combination with Alquang Jungle if that's where it's going to be because the Spirit Ball Silence can really set Alquang off to get the damage in that mid lane in the early rotations and ganks. Rama going to be locked in for the final picking a, phase of uh, Myrmidons in the first not part. Not a surprise at all. Jermaine played that very well, like you said. He looked very strong today. Oh, again? I did not expect this. You didn't expect the Chronos? I didn't to? expect him to run it back. So what are they going to ban away? They're going to focus Magao here. They're going to focus Dardes. It's hard to focus Dardes. This could be Sylvanas. But the boys of Memedans are going to be the first ones with a ban eventually. Wow. Oh, nice. that's a lot. That's a lot. All nice. three so bans are respect bans here. Respect bans indeed. I mean, Actually, all five so far have been respect bans. They have. That's true. Completely. I think that's what we're starting to see more out of EU. There's nothing that we think is almost... I mean, Stop saying we. You live in America. I'm still we. This accent is still European. Until I lose it because I'm around Americans all the time. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Janice gets uh, locked away as well. Uh, Mirmadons doesn't want... Dignitas grabbing that one. So um, I don't know if we'll see the Ra come out. It looks like Dignitas might save their solo lane or mid lane for last. Kronos, of course, with the uh, slight flex pick. He loses his Hunter roll as you see Medusa getting locked. Mirbanons looking for possibly their solo laner or jungler, depending. And, of course, they're going to need a Guardian or Warrior for their support role. Well, a lot of options available for the Guardian role still. Sylvana still on the table. Geb yeah, also available. And we have seen the Bacchus, which I mentioned in set one. And finally, what will we see come out from Mogal this time? Because with his Hades being taken away, oh, Bacchus. there's the Bacchus. I, I think he's very comfortable on this god. And, and there's no knockup immunity on the other side, right? So This is also true. Yeah, they have a, they have a lot of control here with Bacchus. Ooh, wow. Okay, solo lane going to be Chang'e. Chang'e versus Kronos. Talk to me about the matchup. Uh, it's actually pretty even. Chang'e won in the last split when Doom Orb was very, very powerful. But with the bunny being so strong, the correct way to do this is we, sh we should see either the Soul, Sh Soul Stone Vamp Shroud double starter combo for extra damage or Vamp Shroud to start or Soul Stone to start with Boots 1, rushing the Boots as fast as possible. Uh, this is a very even matchup. Kronos 
Has a hard time, though, considering if he hits the beginning of the stun, she can use the two to get out of it. She has probably the best ratio of any mage to guarantee the kill onto Kronos, however, as she does have the best poke in the solo lane for any magic user, on top of the fact that she can do so much damage so quickly thanks to an unmissable ult. Well, let's see exactly what they can do, but jean Kui was the last pick of a Shadow Nightmare in that mid lane as well. I believe it's for the mid lane. We'll double check when we get into game, and it is indeed for Shadow Nightmare. He used to run it quite a bit in Season greedy. 1. Not seen greedy. Not recently, though. Greedy. Who's greedy? Talk to me. Who's greedy? Chang'a's going to be going to lane with no potions. Why is that greedy? Because Well, actually, with the, how fast the bunny is, we could see her do the Uncommon Sash start, and then as soon as they kill the speed buff on right, send the bunny back. By the time she gets to lane, the bunny will be there with a health potion. Okay, so that makes sense. I mean, the start of the game where they're telling you drop the buffs and something could have at least one health potion. In. Does he need one health or one but mana? One health, I Warlock guess. Warlock Sash, or really anything that's being built out of this tree is usually not too suitable for Chunga. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not a health-based character. She's a poke-based character. So uh, forcing her to stick in the lane with her advanced mobility to farm up these stacks might be a detriment. But of course, we know that Mogao loves double stacking. We know that he loves that Warlock Sash. He should be able to use his play style with this build to do well in the early game. With that, it's up to Variety to just poke the hell out of him. Well, let's see what Memedans can do this game. Checking with Dardes as well on that Bacchus, which we've not seen too much of just lately. Oh, Did start with a blink. Real quick, can we uh, go into Golden Hand here? We're going to see if Mogao uh, decides to send back. Now, at this point, the bunny should have already been sent back to get that health potion. He's not going to do it. And he's not going to do it. So he's going to lane in a super, super risky manner. Now, given the fact that we don't see any wards on the bottom side, it means they don't know that he's built this. This is why early wards are so important and why we see NA doing it so much, is if they saw this build coming out from Chang'a, this would have been a guaranteed first blood. Mid harpies on the right are available. We're going to actually see um, Frostyak ignore going for them and let Catfisher pick them up with Sayo. Instead, they're going to split the left option instead, so mid harpies split evenly between the two. Actually, Sayo only got one of those two, so it's actually a, a pretty big win there on the left side for Dignitas because they better utilize the uh, Bumba's Mask, and that comes down to Getfisher not utilizing his item pool. Nice little poke from Dardes there, just flopping onto Renz to make sure he can't continue pushing the wave. As Sounds inappropriate. The what does? If flopping onto somebody. Flopping onto somebody. It just doesn't sound. I flop all the time, not necessarily onto people. <laughs> but Shadow Nightmare as well. Talk about this Jean Queen in the mid lane. We've not seen much of it. We saw a little bit during the LAN and towards the end of the season, but we've not seen much from Shadow Nightmare on this in season one. He is adept at this god, and I like it because it's an additional frontline god here. For me, I agree with that, but Shadow Nightmare to me is the guy that's like, I'm going to snipe the hell out of this dude from super far away. And this isn't that god. This god's a frontline god, and he's so much better at baiting and mobility. And I don't know if it's going to play to his playstyle with this comp. He's going to have to really utilize the below of protections from Eagle's Rally with the protections, of course, from uh, the uh, the Demon Bag. If he doesn't do that properly, he's going to get picked off very easily. We've only seen this god be successful a few times. Lobster did it very well, but we've also seen some pretty hefty losses come off the back of this one. We have, I mean, one thing about Jean Kui as well I can think about why they may have picked this is against Ao Kwong, you can sustain and heal yourself back up after taking poke, so potentially not going to be able to get executed as easily as you would do on some of the other mages. But there's a lot of healing reduction on this team. This is true, Chang'a. Chang'a and Bacchus. Very Remember, true. Belch of the Gods, yeah, if it stuns, hits that last one, it's 25%. Chang'a is going to have 50 out the gate. That's 75% healing reduction in fights that's basically guaranteed to go go off. If either one of them builds a Divine Ruin, they have a hundred. Now the blink on back is, is something that I've not really seen too much of, obviously. Oh, dude. To be fair, like the range that you can get to... Blink Intoxicate is blink not intoxicate, a joke. Blink Intoxicate Belly Flop is definitely an option for them. Wait, Mogao sent the bunny back for Boots 1? Alright, so I have I have no analysis for this. He needs mobility. I mean, 6% though, as opposed to trying to get that Warlock Sash online, it's a little confusing. Uh, with that, he's probably going to try to finish the boots as fast as possible. Again, we'll go back to Golden Hand, but not oh, yet. Taunt. We're looking the at the lane. That's big, big taunt. Bludgeon will hit Sayo, but a good Spirit Ball stops any follow-up damage for the time being. Shadow Nightmare still applying pressure with that exorcism. Sayo, very forthright, very forward there, but he realized there was no follow-up available. All right, so pressure is clear. Chang'a Kronos still going at it. She has enough gold in hand, it seems, to send the bunny back for boots too, but she's holding on to it, which sh says to me that she's waiting now for the sash. Will she wait for the sash? I mean, but how is she full health? How is Kronos not just hitting her if she has no health potions? I mean, mobility as well is going to help out against her Kronos, right? You want to avoid the auto attacks. You want to avoid the time stops. You've got to be very careful with that. 
Oh, doing some damage there. Uh, we should also note that Chang'e does damage from the side of the wave, whereas Kronos needs to be in the front to hit everything with the stun. Uh, but you can see she, he is getting pushed back here. Uh, the bunny is oh, missing. Oh, Variety making a rotation to the mid hop. He's here. We're not going to see Mogami make it. Oh, Variety changed his mind. There may be a fight over this as Frezzy looking for the taunt. Not going to find it thanks to the illusion coming out from Get Fisher. They will give up the harp. He's on a Sayo. Oh, find one then? Look at this. Dart is going right in. It's going to be... Uh, uh, pressured away. Not sure if he did find one on that engagement, but yeah, I'm not sure. Gonna be able to get left, and look who's made the rotation from the duo lane. Jermaine is over there taking those left hand harpies right now after out pushing Renz in that lane. Uh, I think the no, the bunny is back. Yes, it seems with boots too. Get off the bunny. No, I'm sorry, not get off the, the boots too. Well, you should note even without health potions, Mogo has not backed yet, and he's sitting there in lane with almost full health and half mana. This is proper use, and it's not a strategy that we see a lot in competitive play. But he's not playing that aggressively like we sometimes see out of Chang'e players. He's playing the farm game more than anything well, else. Well, that's why we see the Warlock is, Sesh. Is this wise against a Kronos, though, to try and race into a, to a late game standpoint? She actually has a better late game than Kronos. Do you, do you really believe Kronos that? Kronos has the ability to shut down one person and kill them, but she wins the team fight for her team if she doesn't get caught. She baits very well. I think that she can be a stronger character than Kronos, yes. So the late game, the late, the, sorry, the solo lane is both going for a late game sort of build so far. We can have also seen Variety not base just yet. Continuing to farm his way up as Chang'e in the jungle play by Morgao is taking away some jungle while he's got the opportunity to get some extra farm for himself. And Fisher will come back and return the favor of taking a few minions in lane. It's smart. You know, they just split three camps. Uh, they're going to get the wave as well. This puts him in a really good spot as well as Get Fisher, uh, level seven on Alquang puts him ahead of Frostiac. And while Bologna has an amazing end game, I don't think there's any character you fear more in the later half of the game than Alquang. So Frezzy and Ren's gonna go back and take their purple buff over in the left hand side. Still alive for the Myrmidons though. Dardes and Jermaine not done theirs yet, and the boys of Dignitas do know that they're not gonna make a play though, as everybody else is still pretty much just farming away. And this is very similar to the start of game one here. Yeah. What I want to see here, um, Shadow Nightmare, I think, is going to need to invest into Aegis. I know we talked about how we don't really like the item in the current meta, but he's going to need that moving Aegis mm -hmm. really, really badly. If he doesn't get it, he's going to be a sitting duck for those major damaging targets. People like Rama, people like Alquan, who will be able to shut him down completely. But the he's big gonna thing about to the Aegis is you can pop that after you've used your ultimate too, so you're still giving off damage at the same time as having the survivability you need. It makes perfect sense on a god like Jean Kui. It's totally fine. So Get Fisher going to be spotted, probably going to walk away from this one. You should note, though, he is not gaining farm currently. Uh, Get Fisher still rotating around looking for things. He is actually also not gaining much farm in the current regard either. But you'll see Get Fisher go back to the bottom. All right, so he's Boots 2 and Golden Sash. There's no analysis to be done here. He's, he's, back to, he's doing both at the same time. He's double stacking, technically. That's, no. No? It's not what that means. No? Okay. It's not even, not even a little bit. taking a little bit of poke. Going to return some damage with that belch. Mainly on the minions as harpies are b available on both sides for both teams at the back. Mid harpies due to spot on the right just before the left. So we may see some contestation over those once more. Uh, Get Fisher on the bottom once again, splitting like oh, this. The right is doing the right thing though. He's actually out rotating Mog out this game, which is, I think is important for him after yes. how last game went. Look at this. Damage to Frostiac, but oh, out of nowhere, the blink in from Athena. They're looking at Sayo. Sayo's were the beads good all the way through? Yes, they were. And look at this. Frezzo stuck on the wrong side here. Nothing. Nice ultimate. Nice Jesus. ultimate. Smart. Now Shadow Nightmare's coming in with the extra protections from an Athena. They They're going to find Get Fisher. Frezzy trying to juke count the auto attacks. But in look at this. Sayo being landed. Look at but this. He's going to go down. It's going to be real bad here. Uh, they they have no way to escape from this one. Mogao is running out of mana. That's his only. Oh my god. Ow. That doesn't Ow. Work that Chunga swings, man. That's what he's trying why, to say. That's why he went boots two nice. and sash two. Because he could keep the mobility going and still deal damage. R rocking a hard yeah. place here. Which way are you going to choose to go? He's got four people rushing him to have Ridey. Realistically, Ridey should have just killed himself oh, earlier. Oh. There was no play to be made there. He had no mana for the counterplay. The earlier he died, the earlier he could have been farming again. He gave them actually five seconds of extra uptime, and that kind of hurts them. Uh, the bunny comes back, finishes boots, still sitting on Golden Sash. Uh, now, maybe he's not doing Warlocks or Ethereal. Maybe he's going into Gem. A gem a first and I'm time. so down for that. Gem is so strong. Because she can't miss her abilities. Well, they're huge. Yeah, they're huge abilities. They're AoE as well, so everyone's going to get afflicted right. by the Gem of Isolation. There's, so no, all there's be no Heavenlies. Friendly. No Heavenlies so far, but Beautiful. it made a great turnaround from Dignitas. They did just lose four kills for one, but now they pick up two kills and potential tower. What was really big there is that Shadow Nightmare didn't do the card into Exorcism immediately. He threw the card down and then stunned, allowed two more ticks of the card to go off, and then the Exorcism 
guaranteed the highest damage possible right there and ensures that his team picks up two kills to be careful, and evens the game out. He's around the back here. They might not see him just yet. He does not have Waxing Moon available. Maybe he does actually. He took a lot of poke onto Shadow Nightmare. He's not going to get as much heal off that exorcism because of the sustain. Morgan's in trouble here as Fisher does find Nightmare. Will Morgan go down? Well, Fisher gonna actually be able to find this kill into Frezzy potentially as Mogal did find Frostiak. You ain't going anywhere, buddy. Stunned out and yeah. The destroyed. one time, the one time we don't see variety rotate before. Mogal, Mogal cleans up. That was a three-person swing on top of the fact that Variety doesn't have Rewind available to him. This puts him in a really bad spot. Can we actually hover on Variety here to see when his ultimate would have been available? I'm not sure if he just came up. Was Variety in lane then, or did he just come back from base? I'm not sure which. I'm, I'm not sure. He and just Mugau came back because he had died. Yeah, and Mugal had just done the rotation at the right time, which is the just perfect moment for him. That was a three-kill plus all the space control. They're stealing the jungle. They got the Gold Fury and, of course, Aiden to the graphs. What do you think about Blink Chunga? Blink? Is that is, did he pick up Blink? He's got Blink. Okay. Oh, engagement over in the left hand side. Rent a little bit caught out of position here, looking to fight with Frezzy. Petrify has been used and nobody got wrapped up in that for the time being. As Frezzy did find a Tom, he's just managed to disengage his buddy. He was a little bit out of position. So with, with him having Blink and not Heavenly Agility, it's likely that we're going to see it picked up onto either Bacchus uh, or onto Isis. Heavenly Agility is an extremely necessary pickup against this team. There's a lot of slow potential there, especially with the card. It could spell a kill. Uh, oh, but talk about course. a potential kill. It looks like Frezzy's got Again. himself caught out. Dardes with the belly flop that just set that up perfectly. Dardes two times has stunned out the beginning of that preemptive strike, stopping the dash and any potential of escape. Uh, and for the second game in a row, Variety is not having a good time. Almost to the same regard that we saw Ionic uh, yesterday against Denial. You mean Frosty, he had that not, Athena. Frosty, not Variety. What? You said Variety. Oh, I'm Frosty. sorry. Yeah, Fro Just uh, to double check. Um, no, I meant Frezzo. Yeah, that's what I meant. Frezzo. Um, same thing for Ionic yesterday, was playing that Athena, fell behind early, right, and then started playing the Athena game as if he wasn't behind. And now he's just in a ton of trouble. Mogao going deep under the tower, can avoid to take a little bit of poke because of the sustain he's got out. By the way, that there was a, a tiny misplay there. Uh, you, he should have used the two to stop the last hit of the tower. It was a third hit. It was worth about 200 damage there, um, which he is not healing for. But the bunny's back. It's going to be Warlock's There's a fight in mid lane at the same time. As Dude's this just doing whatever he on. wants. An illusion from Get Fisher comes out. Balona's going to come around the back here. Will he find the Eagles rally for Sayo? Will he look for that? No, this they're looking big. for Fisher, who's a little bit caught out. Uses the ultimate to disengage one spirit ball. Will connect with Shadow Nightmare, but a good beat from him. Nexusism will bring down the Chinese dragon. That was really big because you, you saw what he was looking for. Get Fisher turns around to try to throw the dragons out and go for the ultimate. Even if he had landed both hits, I don't think there would have been enough time. He gets picked off immediately, loses the kill potential, and Alquang uh, forced back after he was in the lead. This is Get Fisher's opportunity, or I'm sorry, this is Frosty X's opportunity to get... Oh, Doesn't find the Waxing Moon. He was looking for the big three, man. If he connected with that DM, I think that was a triple. Yeah, it, it would have been the dream. Easy. Big dream, but now it's Frosty X's opportunity to go aggressive. Belch from Dardes going to keep busy, but a good blink top from Frezzy brings him into danger. Bludgeon does not connect with Mogao, and Dardes does good zoning work again. And Mogao almost out of mana here. He's got to be careful. And with no Kronos Pennant giving him that MP MP5, uh, Chunga, a very mana-heavy uh, mage. He did go Sash. Yes, he did go Warlock Sash. So he's just going to go for the stacks once again, and then potentially, where do you expect to see the bell go next? Spear, more than likely? If with Warlock Sash being very tanky, it's likely that he's going to go into some kind of damage. But Chunga, again, needs cooldown reduction more than almost anyone in the game. So with that, it's likely that we're going to see him go into the Kronos Pendant. He actually, the bunny brings back full beats. One of the moment varieties are on this Kronos. Has just finished Demonic Grip. He does have tier two of the Minecraft Salon. They can also build into Pythag's piece as well, which was a change last season. Love it. And now Frosty Egg just going to disengage for the time being. And remember, since those dragons, no matter how they affect someone, are single target, the immense lifesteal that comes out uh, from the Pythagoras piece will make him very, very tanky in the front line. Yeah, both Although, him and Kronos have both got that. When it comes down to it, you really want damage on the character, right? If, if he takes half his health and then, you know, teleports forward and hits someone with a 3-2 combo, they're basically dead with Bancroft's talent. Keep an eye on Frosty X. He did just go back and finish off that Frostbound Hammer on Bologna as well. Good. So his slows are going to become very, very effective, which should allow Shadow Nightmare to get himself in some more 
nasty situations. We got about a minute until the goal, Fury, by the way, Hindu Man. Well, let's see exactly what we're going to see for Tinkers. Fisher on the front line here. Going to take a little bit of power Ooh, from Frosty Axe. Spirit Ball comes out as well. Eagles rally. And the Athena Dunk was not at the same time, unfortunately. Just a little bit early on the Frosty Dunk down there. And now Frosty's going to watch himself. Silenced out. He is here. Has to disengage. Dodd is still going in. Beautiful. Finds the flop. Intoxicate too. He's going to beat him down with that meat stick. He's going to force the weakening curse. But meanwhile, on the backside, Shadow Nightmare. He's trying to do what he can. He will find Fisher. But can Jermaine find Frosty? Frosty Axe, he finds yes, he can. two, three beautiful shots. Uh, Dart is going to take some damage there. Iren's kind of throwing that ultimate away. Belly flop, Good, not going to land, right. but they take the lacerate, and that should control the Gold Fury. Yeah, Frosty's having to return to base deep on the left hand side. He did just go back there. The Gold Fury, though, like you said, was spawning oh, in a minute. It's no. still not gone down. As All right, he did get caught out by the Lamogao and Sayo combo. Yeah, that, that's that's big. Variety out of position there. There was no reason for him to be doing those camps uh, with how many people he knew were in the area. Shadow Nightmare, though, with Frezzy, will ensure that the Gold Fury can't be taken for free. You can't really contest a Gold Fury against the, the giant AoE ultimate, of course. Uh, you know, the, the demons. Dodd There's no way to it. He's looking for Frezzy here, trying to zone the option. Sile's there, too, but watch out for the split from Dignitas, too, because Nightmare is here alongside Renz. And so the disengage will more than likely happen over this option. Sayo trying to throw a warning shot there to Shadow Nightmare. Mogao still stacking up, only at about 23 stacks right now. Uh, gold in hand is low, which means that Bunny should be coming back any time now. You there see was, him in the base. There was one benefit for Team Dignitas there. Variety did manage to pick up that tower over in the solo lane before the rotation was made. So a little bit of gold to them especially, but if you look at the gold differential right now, there's still a decent lead for Mermidums, even with that tower being down. All right, so let's see. The Bunny's bringing back something good. Lost artifacts. No, okay, Soul Reliquary. So he's going into Tough. likely Book of Thoth here. Again, double stacking. Double we know that he likes it. We saw him do amazing things with it last game. But the punishment of double stacking, though, what is the, what is the, 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 there's a benefit to double stacking because of the damage output, right? And the, once you get those items online, the damage is amazing. But what is the negative side effect of this? Well, there's a few negatives. First off, uh, both items are very expensive, which means it's very hard to get the build online. Her early game will wind up suffering, although you can't really argue with 305, can you? Um, another negative is going to be the fact that She's not going to have anything besides damage at this point. Maybe a little bit of health. Uh, she's going to be losing a lot of cooldown reduction. She has no defenses aside from really her beats. Right, did just steal away the blue buff from Mogao. The Golfier have been started, as we can see, by Mermidans Fisher on the zone injury, taking a little bit of both there. Frostyak is watching the fight, and Fisher could be caught out here. Fisher was on his own overextended. Now the Golfier is in trouble. Circle of protection is needed to pop soon. Who gets the Golfier? The Mermidans do, but will they win the fight? Jermaine, destruction from the sky. Two are going to hit two. The third one hitting one. They're already going to rush down Frostyak. They'll trade out another. Mogao still going strong here. He's Jermaine the only will get picked up. It is a 1v3 here, and I don't see him getting out of this the one. Frenchman on his own has to juke but he's using the mobility. Gonna get hit by the exorcism. Rens out of mana, though. Variety isn't, and with that card, that'll spell his death. Well, they're gonna get a two for Gold Fury. Uh, I'm sorry, two plus Gold Fury for five. Major win here for Dignitas. You can see the gold has already been even out. The experience starting to turn in their favor, and they're about to get the things after the action. I don't think it was that big of a thing. They got kills. They lost gold fury. They're going to get a tower. They're still behind on experience. They're still behind on gold. Right, but look how much they're getting out of it, Agreed, right? but it's not a big enough swing just yet. Remember to still hold this game. Oh, definitely. Still definitely, hold this definitely. game. Well, I mean, they won the game for the first 15 minutes. They lost one team fight. And again, you know, uh, I hate to pick on them repeatedly, but get Fisher completely out of position there. Gets picked off before the fight I mean, even really starts. He was on zone injury to an extent. He's trying to poke and keep Al him away. Do he was that. just too deep. Al Kwong doesn't well, you do can zone with illusion. duty. You can with illusion. I mean, you Keep can, him busy. but I mean, he got caught. Keep him busy. You've got to slow as well. Like but you said, yeah, he, was, he was way out of he position. Got, he got caught. He was there too long. That was the issue, and he didn't respect the fact Frosty Egg was behind him. I mean, they have a Chunga. They have a Bacchus, mm -hmm. right? They they had other zoning tools there, and they didn't use them. They put Ao Kuang in the front line, and, and Ao Kuang is probably the character on this team equal to Rama that needs to be farming the most, right? He's got to get that endgame build online, and instead they're using him and sacrificing him for a Gold Fury that they really couldn't contest, but Asayo did play his ultimate beautifully, made sure it was there, yeah. Exactly for the explosion, and they guarantee it. It's basically a hand of the gods. Basically a hand of the gods. Right Harpy's being contested here. Good top from Frenzy, gonna hit all three. Wingus was actually cancelled out by yes, Sayo there as well. There's the damage from Shadow Nightmare coming out, but the circle of protection will heal him back up for a moment. But is a moment enough? 
He's trying to get away here. He's low. Wing Gust going to try to back him up there. No. Shadow Nightmare going to find the exorcism. Mogao doing some damage as well. We're going to see Frosty get pretty low here. Jermaine untouchable. Get Fisher finds the execute, and they're going to look towards Variety. And with Fisher jumping in there as well, they'll get some poke on beads. Are down. Mogao did not find the first dance move for the second one. He found it nice. And look at Jermaine here chasing Renz out. Going to turn to Frezzo. This should be Fire Giant. They should not be chasing this. They have a guaranteed attempt at Fire Giant right now with no way to counter. But they're not going to take it. Love what Dardes did there. He actually tried to force Frezzy to use the DP to strike so he could belly flop in. Find the kill. They chose him for the tier 2 tower in mid. Instead, it's going to be 300 gold each if they get it. Which isn't a bad boon. But like you said, the Fire Giant was an option. Nice Petrify. play. Athena Medusa. Oh. Yeah, they've definitely chosen the wrong path here. They're going to lose some one. Dart is very low, slowed inside the tower. Shot to Mogao as well. A successful defense of the tier two. And again, really unsure of why they decided to fight under a, a objective that was owned by the enemy team instead of a neutral objective. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it was a small mistake from Remedance, but I'm, I'm still happy with the performance so far. This this is teething problems of a team that's just entered the Pro League, but they still need to clear these things up going Should forward. Call them babies? Teething problem. Yeah, so like a... All right, fine. Just saying, you're the European guy. You can do whatever you want. Exactly. You can literally say anything. You'll be fine. I pretty much can. <laughs> <laughs> you can say what you want too, Brandon. No. Are no, you sure? Can't. No, no. Why not? Uh, so Book of Thoth is online. I'll say that. Well, he does get, manage to get the double stacking ha happening before 20 minutes in, so which isn't so bad either. And you know what's great is he only has 54 stacks, uh, which is actually a, a positive to him at this stage because now every time he kills a minion, it's a double stack, at least for the first uh, 50, or for, sorry, 46. The money gets sent back once again. I'm not sure how much gold uh, she had in hand. Could be looking to max the blink here. Otherwise, I go back to uh, either penetration is very important at this point, doesn't have much, or could be going into, uh, into cooldown reduction. That is. Taking a couple of slaps there from Frostiak in the mid lane, but Fisher did come into support. He ate a card for his troubles as well. Mebidans do have a lead still. The gold is a little bit tighter than it was once before. It's about a thousand differential here. And I think the Fire Giant is where this game's going to come down to right now, DM. I don't think experience is really going to matter now. The bunny's back. It's going to be a lost artifact. Now, it could be Kronos Pendant, but we saw him build Rod of Tehuti in this position last time. We did. And um, will he go for it again? Because, yep. I mean... Yeah, Fisher... Is Mogao only got one build? <laughs> it seems That'd so. That'd be so cool if he just had the one build the whole season. He's like, uh, I played a warrior, guys. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to leave the base. I'm just going just gonna, to, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Good flop onto Frosty Egg there. That's nice dodge. Some damage onto him, but he gets out of trouble for the time being. Meanwhile, though, Ren's on the left is a bit caught out with low mana here. Has to lacerate away. Athena did, Prezi did not use <laughs> ultimate, but now it's Jermaine who's forced to use beads after he overstayed his welcome. They're trying for it. Nice slow. Get Fisher looking for something here. He probably should have used the ultimate just for the CC. Not going to find the kill as a result. No way to let Mogao back in there. They're going to look at Frezzo. Well, Frezzo should have his Panther Strike available there. He's going to jump to it. Fisher not going to find the damage over the wall that he was looking for. But the engagement goes in Mervidon's way to a little bit healthier for the time being. No ultimates used as well. They got three out of Dignitas. They did Frezzy's Frosty Axe and Shadow Nightmare. So where are they going to look for here? Potential Gold Fury is what the call seems to be here. Mogao. Mogao's It looks like Mogao's just on defensive duty and gets a Fire Giant. I think that's what he's there for. I think he's just, yeah, he's just trying to bait them away. He's saying like, hey, look at me, I'm over here. Shadow Nightmare is in some trouble here. Um, Shadow Nightmare gonna get engaged on a little bit, but disengage once more using that stun available to him. The boys though of Myrmidons, they could have gone for Gold Fury already, but they were looking to bait in and it's not worked out well for them so far. They've not found anyone to pick. They're pushing into mid. They have all five here. This is gonna guarantee the Gold Fury. The issue is that if Red decides, they can actually just Keep completely let this go and go for FG. Keep an eye on those little diamonds in the right, because if those boys start getting their ultimates back up, this could turn again. It doesn't look though that Team Dignitas will be here in time to contest. Renz is the only one first forward. No, they got it. And he gets stunned out and go here he goes. Dardes alone at the moment with only Jermaine in support. The rest of the team on the other option. And Dardes in a bit of trouble. Luckily, he can make people drunk. Uh, Variety going to be forced out to rewind immediately. Get Fisher very low. Will be picked off early again. One for zero trade so far. And now on the backside, Frostiak did find the Eagles rally onto Jermaine who rolls away. Spirit Ball connects with him. Forcing Variety the beats. Around. Petrify connects onto Jermaine. And now with a bludgeon, the damage is good but the circle of protection is now down for the sustain. The Shadow Nightmare pops his ult and that's just going to heal them all back up. Jeez. It also deterred the Athena ult, which is really big. Renz stuck. Jermaine chooses a different oh, target, though. Jermaine. They go for Shadow Nightmare, who manages to bait a little while. He does go down. Frost 
Pustiak in the background, going to go down as well. It looks like they're going to lose two Fisher, but they're going to pick up two, and they're not nope. done yet. They're going to get three, I think. Renz has to make a big play here. Acid spray over the oh. wall. Mogau is looking for the damage there, too. This should be Fire Giant. I believe they could go for it. Yeah. Or will they go for the tier two? The variety is keeping them at bay here, DM. Are they afraid this, of the Fire Giant? I, I, I would be. I mean, Fire it, Giants throw games, man. I mean, not like this, though. That, again, was guaranteed. Was it because Variety's still there? Like, if he gets one skill over the wall? No, Variety was back in the base. He could have got there in time. Uh, I don't know about all that. I think he could have. I don't know about all that. Well, they're heading over there. Now going to clear out the jungle, take away the speed buff. Give that one over to Jermaine. Blue buff available. More than likely go to Morgau here. Hey, um, Zayden, let's check Golden Hand here. They should be swinging pretty right now. Yeah, 3,200. Wow. 3, wow. On Isis. So that run of to who he should be finished. No, it is. Back. She has restored artifact. Yeah, it'll be finished plus she can get Obsidian Shard or Spear. Wow, yeah, that's... The, Probably she's, Obsidian she's Shard about, because Spear's she's about 200 gold away from doing that. And uh, honestly, I would like to see him stick around and go for it. But no, he, he backs. Uh, it's going to be, it looks like, the Rada Tahuti and, yeah, like you called, uh, level 2 of yeah, the Obsidian Shard. It wouldn't be a surprise to see that go down. He's, he's perfect sense. Get the penetration online. There's already a Spear available for Fisher. But Dignitas with the call to try and go for the Fire Giant. Are they looking to bait someone yeah. in here? They know they got spotted because Fisher's Dragon Face was in the way. And Mogau... Gonna clear out the ward when they reset. And uh, oh, Mogao, hello. There That's you it. go. There you go, buddy. Um, uh, Chunga actually has one of the best defenses in the game. Of course, anyone stacking up, getting hit by that waxing moon. Uh, for those of you who don't know how it works, she just throws a giant stun forward. For every person that hits, it extends the stun to the subsequent people. Hitting one person will do one second. Hitting two people, the first person takes one second, sec second person uh, takes two. And then up to three, four, and five seconds if you find the dream, which she will not. Because five seconds. It's, imagine it's, five seconds with no beads, and you're like, this is off. It's the worst. It's, it's like playing World of Warcraft. It's like getting hit by Kidney Shot. Oh, Kidney Shot, I love that skill. Yeah, right? Followed by Gouge. Yeah. yeah. No, well, Gouge is a... Kidney Shot, this array, Gouge. Reset. Yeah, <laughs> See, don't again. start with me. I know my rotations. Money match. 18, 13. Gold lead of just under 7,000, or just over 7,000, I should say, for the Myrmidons. The Myrmidons, a challenger team that defeated the Night's Watch to take this spot, now facing off against Dignitas, who are a team that Night's Watch didn't do very well against. Myrmidons are really showing they're here this season, and they're looking oh, to Oh, Jermaine, compete. Forrester Beads didn't dodge in time. Return, oh. though, huge stuns. Oh. Oh. He gets blown up, Ren's down to one hit. Jermaine takes to the sky, Snipe. looking for the shot, finds, finds it. it. Patient Beautiful. with that shot as well, he was. And now with the engagement still going, Fisher through Frezzy to the skies. They're looking for Frostiak on the front side. Shadow Nightmare still is alive, but doesn't have his ultimate available. Dang. He's just backing out Shadow Nightmare as the Spirit Ball connects with Frostiak. Shadow's in trouble too now. This could be a surrender vote. Don't chase him. Wow. There's no reason to chase him. You don't need this kill. Wow. Uh, actually, I didn't, think they, I didn't think they were going to kill him Nobody that Nobody dies Excuse on the side me. of Memedans. What a great play. The Waxing Moon Belly Flop combo. Really well played. Now, if they're going to end here, I agree with this call 100%. Otherwise, it should have just been two or three people. The others should have been doing the Fire Giant. They need to split their resources at this point. But either way, they're going to come out with a big win. That was a five for zero. It was, but they can't end from this DM. They'll get the Phoenix in mid, but the respawns are still too low for them to come back. And he's only 26 minutes in. They've chosen the option of caution. I think they could have gone Fire Giant and started sieging down the towers like they did game one. That may have been a misplay. This could be an opportunity for Dignitas because they can't really do Fire Giant right now. Variety still has his rewind. That, I mean, Athena's up. Athena's ultimate. When's Athena's ultimate up? Is it's it going to be a while. No, no okay, she's got 30 seconds. Good. Let's let's look in with Variety, see if he no, can make the play. He, can't make he it cannot. There. Good call there from Mermidans. I thought it was going to be a bit too tight for that, but they made they, they made the right call and the right decision order too. They managed to get what they needed. They can go back to base I'm, shot. I'm very, with just like them. you, I'm very surprised that they had the time. That to was do on that. time. That was on time. Crystally perfect. So whoever made that call did it exactly when they needed to. And I want to give a major shout out to the trust in the team mm -hmm. because there wasn't there wasn't no like hesitation. a rift. There wasn't a rift. There wasn't a hesitation. It was just this guy's calling this. Just listen to the call. Just yep. listen to. It. We don't have time to make decisions. Just yep. do it. And it was a great call as well. Mid Phoenix and Fire. Giant for that one DSI that they find. They're going to go yeah. back to farming a little bit, though. Little, while they're at farming, let's take a look at the graphs. Take a look at those graphs. Oh, and geez. it's going to be 16,000 experience, which doesn't matter too much as most people. I'm, actually, I'm lying. It does matter because there's nobody on the side of, of Dignitas apart from Renz, yeah. who's level 20, and the gold lead, 10,000. And the golf here is about to go down for its maximum value now. Yeah, this is a, another 1,750 gold added to the coffers. It's going to be 2,250 if you couple in the fact that the tier 1 on right is guaranteed to go down here as well. Right, okay. Well, are we calling Polynomicon next item for Mogao? 
<laughs> I mean, it's, the, it's, it's his build. It's right, well, he has the spear coming. Very late feed from he was hoping he wouldn't need it. Dardis does blink in and get the belt off onto Variety oh, into the no. belly flop. He can't use Again. his rewind when you're knocked up, son. And Frezzy's in trouble too. Jermaine in the sky looking for the snipes. Well, that's the first one I've seen him miss so far today. And now Frostiak gets a good Eagles rally onto Dardis, who turns around and belches in his face. Again, this is looking like an F6 here. I don't see them making the play. Shadow Nightmare uses his ultimate way too late. Not going to get the damage because there wasn't enough control. D aside for the boys in blue, and they're going to skip the towers, go right to the mid lane, and they're going to win the game. Well, they're pushing down left at the same time. Now they cleared out that wave. The minions are not going to be coming with them. They are going for the end. As you said, DM, 28 minutes in, a fire minion wave is there too. Jermaine happily tanking this up. Myrmidons are going to potentially take, well, not potentially, they're going to take a 2-0 wow. in their first set. And I'm not going to discredit Dignitas. I'm giving all credit to Myrmidons they play for beautiful. coming out amazing. They play beautifully. Uh, Jermaine. 10 times as good as I expected him to show up in this game. Renz was a real force for them at the end of the last split. And right there, Jermaine showed that he can outplay some of the best hunters in Europe. And then Mogao is just a, a god. M Mogao played very well for both those games. He picked Changa, Hades. Hades we've seen quite a lot of Changa, not so much. Right. Maybe we'll see some more of her again this season. See, the thing is, is we didn't see Variety punish the build. In the beginning of the game, he didn't have any potions, and for some reason, Chunga stayed at max health the whole time. The heal only heals for like 65 with those items to start, maybe even a little bit less than that. We should have seen pressure, but Mogao's mind games were too strong. And there's the first blood on your screen for how this whole engagement began. They were looking for a big play onto Sayo, and it was actually Variety who found the kill. But the rest of the game, the no, rest of that not fight, even the rest of the game, the, the rest, rest of that fight, fight. went into it. It was 4 1 in the end, but it was the first blood. 3 1? 4 1. Th three. It went four. It was four? It was four. Wow. One. Yep, four one. Play of the game. That game, well, we're going to give it to the sniper in the sky, I believe. Jermaine will pick that one up. The Frenchman in the duo lane. Eight, one, and ten. Forty-six. Magical alpha draft points. I mean, I love the way that he played almost every single fight. Look at that. Look at how fast he just reinitiates right after backing off. He keeps himself in the 50 to 55 foot range. This is something that we only see from hunters that are playing at the level of Barracuda, at the level of Moex. I mean, this is, uh, you know, reels. Staying in that range and never being out of it is such an insanely difficult feat to do. And it really separates the great hunters from the good hunters. And Jermaine is on the cusp of greatness. Honestly, we with the Myrmidons coming into the Pro League Except this season, that. I expected them to probably be bottom two. They're going to have a big ass to get themselves up there. But taking games off teams like Dignitas, well, they've got an opportunity here that's going to be at their feet to, you know, have a nice early advantage. This was the win right here, Hindu Man. He beads out. He, he allows Dardis to go back in. Complete trust. And then right there, check it out. The bait was strong. He's going to hit this Look one for, for free and then turn it right back down to the bottom side, do more damage, and just control the fight. Mogo and Dardis set everything up for him to just have almost infinite time there to do more than enough damage. And that right there, that was the win. So where was the weaknesses from Mermidons that you saw today? Weaknesses of Myrmidons get Fisher out of position a lot. Play, a bit too far forward? Play, playing into, uh, out, of, out of position a lot. Let's ask him. What I would like to see is he needs to be playing warriors that aren't Bologna. If he would, imagine if he was Hercules either game. Hercules jungle. Hercules, we, we've seen a lot of people do it. Get Fisher has the play style of a warrior. You hear this, Fisher? Are you listening to oh, us is he? Right is he here? He's here. Oh, that's lovely. Hey, Fisher. Hello? Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, what's up? I'm good. Congratulations! Did you expect mm -hmm. to go 2-0 today? Yeah, that's kind of what we were expecting, yeah. Did you get a haircut uh, apparently today? Apparently you didn't, but you know. But I'll be honest, did you get a haircut today? Did I get a haircut? No, not yet. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting until I go back to school. Your hair's like Samson well. now. That's what you can't cut it now. <laughs> You've won 2-0. How did you guys feel the performance went for you today? Um, we, The first game was a bit iffy at the start, but second game was a lot better except from me. I need, I need to go to some casual games, practice some Alquang. It's brutal. But besides that, yeah, everything was good. We were really communicating well. And there's a lot of synergy between us. And see, always I, turns up. I see, I agree with the synergy 100%. Uh, Dardas, now this is a player that's really starting to gain a lot of no notoriety in Europe. Lobster talking about how much he loves the way that the guy plays. There seems to be a lot of trust between Dardas and the rest of the team, which is something a lot of the European teams are lacking. Chemistry is really big, and realistically, there wasn't a lot of uh, a, a lack of individual skill either. Jermaine showing up, you know, having the same type of plays that we see from Snoopy and from, you know, Reels. Uh, Obviously, you have a lot of hard teams coming up. The top three in Europe are still uh, to battle you throughout the weeks. Tell us a little bit about your strategies or your game plans and mentality going in. 
Uh, I don't know if we can reveal anything about strategy, but, like, I don't know, I think we think we can beat them, we have a chance. Pick we have Hades. a lot of individual skill on this team. Pick Hades is one strategy that I'd advise uh, I don't to think go we're getting that very often. You, you <laughs> reckon, after today's performance? They didn't look nah. that good. Full, mean... full Mage Hades with one death in the Pro League, I think that is the first time, and probably only time, we're, we're ever going to see that. So I know it's early days for you, Fisher, this was only your first game in the Pro League, but where do you expect you guys to finish up this season? That's a question that a lot of people would always want to ask, is uh, what are your expectations? Where, what's your plans? Obviously, well, uh, I'd, I'd get say there, but... fourth or fifth. I don't know. That's a good shot. That's a good call. It's early days for that, though. I mean, there's a lot of games to go ahead. Fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth. Middle of the pack. He's just rolling dice. Come on. Where, where was the first? This is Europe. There was no banter at all. No banter from Fisher. I, I guess. I, I've already been told off by F dot for banter in the past. I'll you put have? It behind Who's F dot? Who's he? I don't know, some Randy. Some, some Randy New Yorker. I agree. I like you sometimes, Fisher. <laughs> don't cut your hair until you lose a game, then you can cut your hair. Thank you so much for tuning in. Any shout-outs or sponsors, shout-outs or anything like that, maybe? Uh, I've got a shout-out for Big Man Tings, my old lame partner. He's been really cool. Big after I Man Tings. Elif the, the, the production love Yeah, him. huge love to the guy. The production love him because of his name, more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's all I've got. Any other shout-outs you want to give, Fisher? Uh, shout-outs to myself for feeding. I guess that's it. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. Good luck in your future games. You had a great performance, you and the Myrmidons. And with that, that's the end of the first set of the day. Great games to start off with. I did not expect it to be that entertaining. Uh, you know what's crazy is we, we talked about the Myrmidons, you know, whether it was in the cu the relegation cup or wh whether it was even before today. And it was 100%, let's talk about Sayo, talk about Sayo, talk about Sayo, a little bit of Mogao, talk about Sayo again. And that was just like the duo lane show. Mm -hmm. I it mean, was. Dardes and Jermaine were incredible, and with that, you're going to find them with a 2-0 victory, putting them in line Top with of the Epsilon Esports and London Conspiracy. London Conspiracy, who had a great performance yesterday as well, up against Team Justice, formerly known as Upcoming Stars and Paradigm. They slipped down to the boys of Epsilon, who are looking very strong too. The Epsilon Next is... Week. Epsilon looked yesterday as strong as everyone expected them to look the first time that we saw them. And now, don't forget, we still got more games coming up. North America's up next, and we'll be bringing you all that action shortly after the short break.
hot seat. I'd rather see you in my dreams. And every chance you dance, I'll take. If I can't see you.